Hail and hello, everyone. Welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, a Midgard Musings production. Join me, Jesse, your host, as we discuss random heathen-related topics and various other things in an attempt to find where, if any, heathen worldviews can be applied. You can support this podcast by clicking on the Linktree link in the description or show notes. You can also follow me on all of my social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and become a patron on Patreon. Join me every Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Central on all major podcast streaming platforms, including Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, and many, many. If you wish to have your voice heard on the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, you can dial in to 615-671-9832. Thank you all once again for listening to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. Enjoy and hail to you all. Yes, 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 indeed. Hail to you all and welcome back to uh, to this week's episode. Uh, get back into a regular rotation hopefully um appreciate everyone's understanding for missing last week but here we are back again uh with a solo um run this time a solo episode don't have any guests lined up uh for probably about the next couple of weeks at least um i do have uh, one guest that uh from the united kingdom i'm very excited to to have him on um more to come on that probably within the next uh week or two leading up to that week's release um but yeah here we are just to recap on some things and and talk about something that uh i think needs to be that we all should be like reminded of um, when it comes to getting together with people um so more to come on that here in just a minute but yes do want to say uh thank you all for continuing to support the podcast and all the ways that you do um watching sharing liking and uh engaging with them in any which way that you can um it, it's it's much appreciated um be sure to check the link tree links that are you know going to have all of the ways that you can support the podcast and the channel and so forth through all the various uh means uh that is always greatly appreciated and helps keep me doing what i'm doing it it, it puts a a value <laughs> uh to the to the actions that i'm taking to to keep this type of thing coming out here for for all of you fine people um so <clears throat> let the incense before we forget just doing one today one frankincense uh shtick should be enough to get going what we need yeah so hope you're all doing well by the way hope you guys are staying safe staying staying strong staying healthy um taking care of yourselves you know, with you and yours and uh, living a living the best life that you can live, the best heathen way that you can be. Um, so, yeah, guys, we have uh, something that just kind of came to my mind um, recently. I've talked a lot about this particular subject. So for some of you maybe that are, um, you know, longtime supporters and that have listened to this podcast or viewed my content um, here on the channel, uh, for any length of time, you're going to know that, you know, what I'm talking about is, is, is been pretty, I don't want to say beaten to death or overspoken, but i always feel like, you know, there's, there's, there's times when, uh, you, you're going to get questions. You're going to have situations where revisiting things that we've talked about before and, and rehashing those details, um, is good. It's good to be reminded of those types of things, you know? Um, and one of the, one of the things is, is this topic of, frith right and i want us to kind of remind ourselves what 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 that is um and first by 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 talking about what frith is you know i want to start by saying well, what 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 kind of sparked me into that direction of thinking along those lines um here in the middle tennessee area 
the local heathen communities have really started to make themselves known. Um, and it's been a great thing to see. It's almost like somebody came through and just woke a bunch of people up and there's been activity, there's been movement, there's been, you know, a lot of um, networking taking place. Uh, the last Middle Tennessee Heathens meetup, um, which we hosted at um, the McAllister's Deli in, in Murfreesboro off the of medical center, um, had about 20 some people or so, man, eh, between 15, 20 people or so show up, which may not sound like a lot, but when you get, you know, an area in a restaurant that is concentrated to, you know, pagans and heathens and, and folks of that nature, you know, it's, it's a nice little group of people. And the majority of those people had never met uh, each other in their lives before, you know, so it was a common ground. It was, it was a, a place that we all could meet on, on common terms and get to know one another. And it really, like I said, like, you know, ever, ever since like the last couple of months or so of us reintroducing these things into the area, it's like, we're seeing a lot. And it's not just us here in middle Tennessee. It's, it's, you know, people up close to like <clears throat> the Kentucky border, uh, Clarksville, Tennessee has been seeing a pretty active group. I'm, I'm not too privy to what's going on up in the Clarksville area, but I've heard that there's a group of upwards of about 30 people that meet on a regular basis. So shout out to the Clarksville heathens up in that area. Um, there is the Nashville heathens uh, group on Facebook, which although small in number in terms of their memberships um, have a really great reg regularly uh, recurring get together at the uh, honey tree meadery in Nashville and got to meet some of the folks that are affiliated with uh, the honey tree uh, meadery. They have regular weekend get togethers um, and they have this, I guess, this sort of deal where, you know, Saturday nights you can come and uh, bring your horn and you get your horn filled up. If you have one, right, you bring your horn you can, and, and it gets you a horn of mead. Um, and you've got, I think, people there that, you know, or I mean, it may have just been this last Saturday. I don't know if it's a regular Saturday thing where you can dress in, in period clothing. You know, you can go and wear your costume or wear your your ritual garb or your pagan garb, whatever you want to call it, and uh, just socialize and, and, and talk with people of, of like minds. Um, aside from that, you know, the Raven Moon Hearth uh, kindred that um, Chieftain Greg Strong is, is you know, uh, helping with those folks, and, and they're all doing things. They've got the Shadow Moot event coming up here in another couple of months. Well, yeah, another couple of months or so. It's mid-October. Um, I've been talking about that, too, and you know, so there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of recent activity going on with people. Um, our next meetup here in Middle Tennessee is happening in September, um, basically a month from or so, a month give or take a few days from when this podcast is airing. So mid September, um, we're hosting a park moot. So it's going to be like a potluck sort of thing where everybody contributes, everybody brings something um, as far as food uh, and drink. Um, and it's, uh, it's going to be again, an outdoors, uh, event. So we're going to have like a little pavilion, um, that we congregate in at, at one of the local city parks. Um, so we're hoping for a really good turnout and from the responses that I've seen and, and, and stuff from, from the event details, um, my back is a little bit tight, so I'm going to stretch a little bit, but the, the, the details from the responses of the, uh, uh in the events are like, We've got a lot of people expecting to come, um, people from Alabama, people from other parts of Tennessee, po possibly people even from Kentucky. Um, so the turnout that we had at the restaurant, if, 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 the, if half the people show up that are interested in showing up, uh, we'll already be uh, more than what was at the, you know, little uh, deli meetup or whatever we want to call it, the, the pub moot it's not really a pub because they don't serve alcohol but you know what i'm saying um so seeing all of this stuff right and, and seeing all of these people come together and, and meet and network and become friends and and share in conversation all of that stuff is is part of the community uh fostering and the community building things that are needed for tribes and other kindreds and stuff to um grow uh for ones that are established and even to perhaps have ones um uh, be created anew right? Seeds may be planted for those trees to grow in and grow from, I should say. 
so seeing all this activity, right? Like it's, it's great. And, and one of the things that um, we, we probably hear a lot, and there may be even folks listening, watching today that use the term that I'm about to say um, in the context of which I'm about to say it and that it's, you know, um, it's good to meet people and, and share frith with people, you know, or to meet and, and, and have frith with one another. Um, and in the context that I think it's being used, and in the context that I think a lot of people who are using it intend it to be used, uh, there's some basic things about what we're referring to here that really should be clarified and, and I think revisited. And that's why I said, you know, I may have talked about this before in other podcasts, or I've mentioned the word and the term and the, and the meaning of it in, in other uh, episodes or other content before. But for those that are new, uh, for those that may be listening for the first time, or maybe those that have just um, never heard it gone into in great detail, here we are. So, you know, one of the things about when when pagans gather together, when, when, when heathens gather together, so much of what I come to kind of realize is that there's this almost uh, unspoken sense of family, you know, you're gathering around people that are so like-minded and that are so uh, that that share in some of the same beliefs as as you might that the um, the sense of of family um, is almost inherent. You know, like you feel like you're a part of a family of pagans, or that you're these these pagans that you've never met a day in your life before, who are sharing the same religious views as you perhaps or close enough to them that you have the same spiritualities. They, they honor the same gods and honor their ancestors and do all these things that you can relate with that now, just because of those, you know, similarities and because of those, you know, things that you can be uh, compared with and to that now all of a sudden these, these strangers are suddenly your family, brother, sister, other such familial uh, bonds and, and titles being, being used with the again the phrase of yeah you know we're we're meeting together in frith it's good to share frith with each other yeah 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 right so and and i want to preface with what i'm about to say with kind of like a disclaimer in that what i say here are my views my thoughts my ramblings right are just that they are a random heathens <laughs> ramblings uh, and I am that random heathen. I'm just a, a heathen in, in Middle Tennessee that has ideas that wants to share them with the world. And, and this is the platform and platforms that I can do it in. Um, but by no means am I the person that you should walk away from at the end of the day and, and, and change whatever it is that you're doing just because I said it. If what I said rings a bell or if what I said sparks you to do some research and then through your own research and through your own practices now you are finding that the thing that i said makes you a better pagan then that's great so be it but i'm not here to tell you what to do and, and how to do it i'm simply here to share with you my thoughts and my ideas and, and based on my own research based off of my own practices and and making sure that the the things between those two like the lines in the sand are defined right because what is historically referenced what is actual or factual or close enough to it is is that and what my own personal unverified personal gnosis the upg type stuff is what that is and that i don't blend the two together I, or i don't i don't the lines are are, are, are def definitive between the two you know i don't i don't say that my own upg is should be taken as fact okay documented fact historical facts there's some speculation in my own mind that the, the reason that we have these historical facts, right? The, the, the historical sources that we have is because somebody at some point in time decided to write down things that was at one point in time, another person's UPG, right? They saw something, they experienced something, they had some sort of a, a, a moment or a thing and they said, well, this is what it is and I'm gonna, and then everybody else nearby said, well, okay, well, if he's doing it, or she's doing it that way, I'm going to do it that way too. And then we're all going to do it that way. And next thing you know, it becomes a tradition. And then that thing becomes a religion. And next thing you know, it becomes doctrine. And so going into the weeds a little bit with it, but whether or not, you know, you want to go down that rabbit hole, that's, you know, again, your prerogative. So there you go. There's, there's, there's that kind of disclaimer. Nothing that I'm about to say should be the, the thing that tells you to do what you're doing differently or think th differently. However, if what I do say inspires you to look into it a bit more and then what you find um shifts your thoughts and, and you become 
more in line with what I'm thinking, then so be it, whatever. So let's talk about it, right? Let's talk about the whole frith thing and saying that when we share in frith or meeting in frith or, or you know, being together uh, in frith. Um, that doesn't really, like I get why you're saying it because there is, and I'm going to be quoting something actually because we're talking about, you know, a term that is an old English uh, and cognate with old Norse and, and an old high German and some of these older, you know, uh, old Germanic languages that aren't, um, spoken anymore in their true form or in their original forms, um, just the cognate cognate forms of those of those ancient languages are being spoken. But the word frith um, is again, it's 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 an old English word, and we have at least one or two sources that I can think of off the top of my head that are rep that that are that are you know um, I say uh, reliable enough, reputable enough. Um, to go off of and get an understanding. And one of those sources that I'm going to be referencing is, uh, it's not an ancient source, okay? Um, but uh, I think it's Wilhelm Gurenbeck from Culture of the Teutons. He's the author of, of Culture of the Teutons. Um, in his book, um, he writes that frith is the state of things which exists between friends. The state of things which exists between friends. Now, the word friend, the modern word friend, is is cognate to frith or vice versa, right? The, it we get the word friend from this word frith, and it means first and foremost reciprocal inviolability. Now, I want us to pause and just and and remember these two key things. Frith is the state of things which exist between friends, not people who've never met before, and it is. Uh, in its first and for most foremost definition, reciprocal inviolability, okay? Now, remember that as we go on. However, individuals' wills uh, may clash in a conflict of kin against kin. However, stubborn individual heads may seek their own way according to their quota of wisdom. There can never be question of conflict save in the sense of thoughts and feelings working their way toward an equipose in unity. We need have no doubt, but that good kinsmen could disagree with fervor, but however the matter might stand, there could, should, must inevitably be but one ending to it all, a settlement, peaceable and making for peace, frith. So the last part there, right? A settlement, peaceable and making of peace. These are all very key things to, 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 to bear in mind, right? The existence of, of the state of things between friends is probably one of the most important aspects of this. You cannot experience frith with strangers in its true form. You can experience peace between strangers, and that is what we would call grith, right? This, this, Ceasefire, peaceful state. So we've seen the term used or, or referenced in, uh, I believe, uh, I'm trying to remember where the source is, but it, it, uh, around the Icelandic uh, all thing. And I don't think it was 900 something, 1000 AD, something like that. Where you had all of these clans, all these tribes, all these kingdoms, whatever, coming together for the annual thing, uh, for, for legal purposes you know and everybody that came to the thing had to agree to be peaceable could have been that you were at war with you know Wilhelm and 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 Bjorn was trying to kick you know Ivar's ass over there in the other part of Norway but when they all came together at the thing it was a ceasefire we're okay we're we're, we're going to be civil we're going to be peaceable we will observe and maintain the grith stead the state of this mutual agreement of peace. What we have in online communities and even in personal communities when, when strangers meet, that, those are what we would refer to as grith meetings or gristeds, okay? We're not sharing in frith because we're strangers. We're sharing in grith. We, we are agreeing that this is a mutually acceptable place to agree. We, we uh, despite what, you know, I think or what you think, we're, we're meeting together on peaceable terms, all right? So I understand, like, why you're, you, would, you would have people that would say, 
you know, sharing and frith at like a, at a meetup um, or at a park mood or, or anywhere where it's, you know, public gathering place. Because they're looking at the word frith as just the state of peace, right? A peaceful agreement, a peaceful state, which again, frith does have, uh, the meaning of the word does have connotations of peace involved. There has to be peace when frith is um, established and maintained and, and kept. Um, but it is not just peace. It is reciprocal inviolability. The settlement of peaceable and making for peace, right? It has to be made, again, from the state of things between friends. So I'm going to use some examples of, well, I've already given you like the one or two examples of what grith is. You know, if you have made like a, an online Facebook group or Discord server or any other sort of, you know, online platform where you, you talk to people who you've never met in person, right? Those meetings, those gatherings, those are gritsteads. There's rules that you have to abide by, right? There, there's, you got to play by the game of the house, right? You got to do what they, what they say. You got to be peaceable. You have to maintain grith. And then when grith is violated, then there's, you know, consequences to be made. You will get banned. You'll get, you know, put on mute. You'll, all these various checks and balances that are in place for grith. Those are one. Those are a couple examples of I can think of of of, of, of a, a grith said. Um, the meetups are another one. Now frith is is entirely different. Frith, to, you know, if you want to look at it in like modern terms, is frith. Yes, there there is parts of of frith that mean peace. But the bigger thing about frith is that it refers to the obligation of peace that you maintain between friends, kinsmen, right? In modern terms, I could think of, of probably the most like obvious example would be uh, marriage or, or civil unions, you know, where you've got two different people who have established a friendship, a, a, a bond of love um, and a commitment to one another. And then oaths are given and taken between those people to secure their uh, adoration and love uh, and respect and all this for each other forever uh, you know uh, you know it, it's a binding contract and it that's a very good example of frith in the sense that now like you know my wife and i let's say right you know we we've exchanged vows at our wedding we have sworn oaths to each other uh during our our, our marriage right and so those are like the bind that's that's like the binding part of of the frith that we have frith is you know we spent time with each other we learned to respect and in, in, in honor each other um and there isn't anything that one wouldn't do for the other it's like the ultimate highest achieved almost level of frith you know you, i think there's like well, again we'll talk a little bit about that but like varying degrees of of uh of frith you know uh the frith that i have with my wife is not the same frith that i have with you know uh, my tribesmen um but there's frith there it, there's peace and then when there's not peace, there is uh, measures to counteract and, and heal and, and repair the damages that, that was done because of that, that strong sense of I am obligated to this person and they are obligated to me. So a, a marriage would be probably a good example of what frith means. You know, it's yes, there's peace, but then there are times where it's not always, and you have to compromise, you have to reciprocate, you have to come up with an agreement that, okay, you know, because of our love and respect and honor for each other, then, uh, okay, well, I'm not going to necessarily, I don't want to do that. And you don't want to do it my way. And I don't want to do it your way. But let's figure out what the best way is to do. That's going to at least make both of us a little happy or one of us happy enough to just agree to disagree and let it go and, and do whatever it is right um similarly uh you know in in the tribe when at least the way our tribe has has been established and was 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 built off of the um deeds between uh the brothers of the tribe you know the our, our, tri our little group you know dingo patrick richard gene myself right our core tribe of, of inner circle people it was not necessarily an oath that was given or taken, but a worthing, 
process had to uh, be, be underwent or undergone, right? We underwent worthing. We did things with each other that proved each other's worth to the other man. You know what I mean? Uh, if help was required, we would be there for each other. When, when you know, um, one of our tribesmen's father died, you know, we came and we showed our respects. You know, we work together to plan and 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 have our an annual rituals. We do all of the spiritual work as a tribe together, and, and it's and it's even before that ceremonial piece of the ritual, everything that leads up to it, the preparation of the land, the, the you know, chopping of firewood, the building of the camp, the cooking of the food, all of that stuff leading up to it is uh, kind of like ritual in and of itself. You know, it's preparing you, it's getting you in that mindset of what's about to happen and you're doing it with your tribe and you rely on one another you know when i get too tired from cutting the wood dingo steps in and and and, and helps cut more of it or if i'm over here having problems setting up my camp patrick's going to come and help me level the ground out you know and i'm going to see that you know richard or ken or whoever else might be there that's that's you know needing something that i'm attending to them too so there's this reciprocation right the reciprocal inviolability that uh, Gernbeck is talking about in his culture of the Teutons that is the 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 glue right that binds the strength of frith and because and so anything else that happens no matter if you know I get a bug up my ass and and something that you know Gene says pisses me off because of the frith bond that we have it's the damage that occurs from things like that is so trivial that the, the bonds of, of frith seal it back up again you know so that damage that is sustained in minor things like that has barely little impact you know we we just get go through it and we we shrug it off and it's you know it's just us being us the more severe damages to frith the things of like betrayal or failure to uphold your end of the deal you know things that would make you not trust or be as trustworthy things that you could have done to have all the work that you put into worth yourself now you're not proving yourself to be as worth as much as as, as you were thought to be at first you know so your your worth diminishes you become uh you know a uh, uh, an a, a, an expendable asset as it were you know you're you're not upholding your end of the deal the tribe is struggling because you are not have you're not pulling your weight you're not doing enough you're failing to meet the obligation that others have held up to you know the standards that have been held uh, that they've been held up to and that you hold them up to you're failing on your end and so that's a damage to the frith bond that's a, that's a, that's a pretty severe that's a critical hit to that the frith web the thing that binds you all together and depending on how strong that frith is prior to that damage being sustained determines whether or not that damage can be repaired or if the damage is so great if the violation is so uh terrible that you have to cut your loss and outlaw that 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 thing or that person right get it get it away and then now it's it's outside of that sacred inner circle of, of tribe and of the of frith so you know the frith that i have with my wife there is literally nothing that is gonna break that web we've been together for seven years married for five of, of those seven we've gone through everything that a couple our age i think could think of and then some you know the the betrayal betrayals of trust the loss of loved ones the injury of persons and body body and and the, the mental the psychological the spiritual struggles that we've endured together in the last seven years of being together has established a a a, a, a web that is impervious to anything like there's nothing that's gonna rip that apart you know you can take a, a meteor hit and it'll shake it and then that's about it there's not going to be any penetration there's no there's no penetrative damage you know you're not going to get that from just meeting up with somebody for the first time and talking about the norse gods or ancestor veneration or land veteers or you know any of that other fun stuff that is about this practice right you're not going to have that with somebody that you just walk in with there's no sharing of frith there's no um you know that's not happening there at that point 
what you're doing is is you're you're you know it's a gristead you're meeting now what can become of that what that what the interactions between people that could definitely lead to uh things that build frith and and building frith is 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 the start of it you've got to start somewhere right go to these meetups meet these people talk and hang out about you know things but know what it is when you go there it is it is a common meeting ground of similarly like-minded individuals this isn't a you know this isn't a summons from your chieftain or your jarl or your you know gothi or whatever to attend something at a, 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 of a high feast nature and it's just you know you yourself and your kinsmen and your tribe that would be but more like what you would see of, of examples of frith because everyone there is is bound together through obligation right so you you know frith peace right yes there is definite peace there there is trust there and within frith you know um and and loss of, of trust betrayals of trust can damage frith there is the maintenance of frith right so once you've built something there is the maintenance of it and the upkeep of it and that's even harder to do than to build it you know again if the if 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 the building and the working on it has made it so that it, it's it's nearly impenetrable uh then you've done well and the maintenance is low if you're if you're too uh, anxious up front to get involved with people that have not you know proven their worth to you and you have not proven your worth to them and you get involved with people too early on then that frith bond can't be established and so when betrayals happen when when you know so-and-so sleeps with so-and-so's boyfriend girlfriend does something inappropriate look, breaks trust right critical hits because oh this was supposed to be a frith bond you know this is supposed to be a you know a, a band of brothers and sisters and look what you've done to me well, you didn't even give them the chance to prove their worth to you. If you give them a, a year or so, you might have seen behaviors that could have indicated, ah, I better stay away from this, you know, group of people or 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 that individual or whatever, right? So again, that that it has to start somewhere, but if it doesn't start off strong and, and get that, you know, traction at first and 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 then good diligent maintenance applied to it at that time it's 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 too weak to to continue and it, and it can't it's going to just you know the threads are going to fray from that web maintaining that frith and 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 building those strongs again it, very few examples could be uh, given of of a, of a web that is not susceptible to damage when that damage occurs is it repairable or has the damage been so strong to that, that there, there's that there's nothing to repair there's nothing else to build off of it's it's blown down tornado ripped it right out of its roots <laughs> obliterated right um and i've had examples of all of that happen with me in the time that i've been practicing my heathenry you know i've seen frith get destroyed you know Sometimes the best efforts, the best made plans um, still have a have a weak spot and that weak spot gets detected and it gets hit and it's and it's over. You know, I've learned that to really get to know somebody, you, you know, a few weeks, a month, that ain't enough. You know. You need to give time. You need to allow time. You need to allow experience. You need to allow worthing to occur. You can't just say, yeah, I hung out with him a few times in the last month, and he's a really cool guy, man. I like the way he looks. He he really carries himself well. He he quotes the Havamal like it's the Bible, man. Like, What is he worth? What will he do for you? What What has he done already that you know of? What is the level of the layer of his of his mane and, and how is his gefrain? How are his how are his might and reputation, you know? So anyway, going out into the weeds a bit with all of that, but it, it all points back to the fact that I, I I get it. I know why I've heard the term frith being used in this context that they thought it was. And I'm like, it reminds me of that that scene from the Princess Bride where inconceivable inconceivable and then Diego Montoya he's like that word you keep saying that word I do not think it means what you think it means 
And that's what I'm going like. You keep saying that word, Fritz. I don't think it. I don't think that you know what it means. What you think it means. It doesn't mean what you think it means. So we're going to talk about it. We're going to revisit it. It's peace. Yes, there's there's an element of peace there, but it's 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 way deeper than that. There is reciprocity. There is obligation. There is trust. There is love. You know, there there is all of the things. And it's and it's really interesting to see that the, there's a word that exists that encompasses all of that. It, it, it's like, a, you know, you can say all those things. And when you condense it into one word, you have frith. And that is where we get our word friends from. Because the state of things between friends, right? That, that reciprocal inviolability. So as we are being so excited and, 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 and thrilled to see the heathen and pagan communities of, of Middle Tennessee uh, really starting to step up and, and do things and, and be active and, and build, right? Um, as excited as I am to see that and, and as thrilling as we can uh, you know, be all happy for, it, let's remember, okay, um, and this again, this goes beyond my own UPG. This goes into what the literal meanings of the word are. You know, let's be careful of of who we uh, share and tie frith with, because as growth expands and as things become bigger and as more pagans are doing more things, and as we start shaking the ground a little bit and making some noise, uh, it's going to attract unsavory and the wrong types of people that want to be a part of something because they have ill in mind and they have and they are not the type of people that you would want to uh, exchange and share frith with and establish obligation between right that's gonna happen you're gonna have to be careful you're gonna have to be watchful and you're gonna have to not be like yeah come here and have frith with us guys you know it's our first barbecue of the year we haven't seen each other all winter come and have frith with us uh -huh. you don't don't set that standard don't set the standard of frith just being a, a cool place to hang out man right it's all chill here bro right that's grith that's your grith stead okay the mutual meeting grounds of i'm not gonna mess with your shit today but that doesn't mean i'm not gonna come knocking on your door tomorrow because as while we're here we got to be civil i still hate your guts henrich So anyway, that's my thing for this week's random heathen uh, ramblings, right? Uh, there's your frith breakdown. Um, do you, again, do your own research, please. Whatever I say uh, is backed by what I've done in terms of my research that, that tie into some of my experience. But this particular thing, this is what I found. This is what I understand. Share your thoughts right? If you want to do your own research, I encourage it. I would love to hear your thoughts on the matter. Call into the Midgard Musings hotline, which is the 615-671-9832 number that you hear at the opening of the, of the podcast every week. And it's in my bios and all that other fun stuff. So you can call in, leave a voicemail. We'll feature you here on the podcast on the next episode and talk about your response. Um, or you can write in to uh, midgardmusingstn at gmail.com with your thoughts and I'll uh, I'll read your email. Um, you can remain anonymous. Just let me know in the correspondence. It's totally fine. Uh, I will only hear and read uh, your content that you deliver uh, before it airs. So if you want to remain anonymous, you certainly can. But I would love to hear from you. I would love to hear your thoughts. I would love to hear how this particular topic um, resonates with you. Um, or if it's helped in any way or, you know, what your, again, just what your thoughts are. Um, so thank you all for, again, being patient for missing last week's episode of the, of the podcast. There is, a, like I said before, uh, a guy who is in the United Kingdom who I've already gotten confirmation from would like to be here on the podcast. Um, we were supposed to do it this past week. Time got away from us both, actually, but I, I, I took the blanket. I totally forgot to follow back up with you on this. Uh, so, Chris, if you're listening, um, by the time this airs, I should have hopefully nailed down a date and time uh, with you uh, for our podcast. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, and everybody else that's listening and going, who's he talking about? You're just going to have to stay tuned. I will share something like, you know, within the week or so before. 
uh, just to get you guys all hyped up about it. Because I want to I want to hear from all of my uh, heathen friends in the United Kingdom and in Europe, man. And it's great to have people that are willing to talk uh, to the world through this platform with me um, and, and contribute so much in their way to the communities in their respective regions. So awesome, great stuff that I'm really thrilled and happy to be a part of. And I'm thrilled that you're here being a part of it with me and that you're choosing the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast to absorb your you know, weekly heathen related content. Um, don't forget to check the link tree link in the description or show notes of the podcast. Any way that you want to support and help this podcast grow um, by either buying merchandise, subscribing as a patron on Patreon, donating to the channel through PayPal, whatever it is, anything that you see down there in those links, um, it really does help. Um, and it's greatly appreciated. Um, stay tuned because we also have... Um, now that I think about it, we have uh, a, a heathen in need, uh, a heathen brother of mine in need, um, and I want to do something special um, to help him. Um, it's going to be a sort of crowdfunding thing, and uh, so some more details to come on that, um, but we've got about a two-month goal um, at the time of the, this podcast airing, so I want to get on it pretty quickly. Um, so there will be information coming out here on this podcast, on the platforms, so it's like, you know, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, um, all that noise, um, on what that crowdfunding, uh, uh effort is going to be. So I think with as many people as this podcast reaches, uh, within a week, um, if we just had, you know, a couple of dollars from each of you folks that absorb this, we, we, we'd get our, we'd get to our goal relatively quickly. I mean, we, we'd cut that shit down quick. So, um, like I said, there'll be more to come on that, but I did just want to put a bug in all of your uh, folks' ears about that thing. Um, so, yeah, stay tuned for that. Um, please upvote this podcast, like it, con you know, uh, I don't know how to upvote, whatever. Whatever the platform is that you're taking this podcast in on, if you can favor it, upvote it, uh, like, subscribe, follow, I don't know. All of those things, please be sure to make sure that your uh, notifications are all turned on, right? So that way, whenever I do upload content, wherever it's on, whether it's YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, uh, that you're getting those notifications and you're catching what I post, because usually there's a reason why I'm posting something, thinking that it's going to be useful, helpful for you. Um, so yeah, please do all that. And uh, I think that pretty well wraps this episode up. So it's been great. It's been fun. Thank you all for listening to my ramblings this week. I hope it's helped you. Um, if it has, leave a comment down below or, or send it in through one of the previous mentioned methods. Till we all see each other and talk to each other again, may the gods continue to notice you, and may your ancestors always smile upon you.